Okay, so we're breaking down from the show, and uh, I stepped on the power supply for the Presonus little guy here. So that just made me think about where am I going to get a new one? Do I go back to the factory? And there's an easier way. If you need a power supply for these things in a pinch, because these wires are really, really tiny and fragile. And, uh, you know, just like I picked the thing up and the little piece was under my foot. Boom, there it goes. So I'm going to show you how to look for a power supply real easily. And it's uh, what's involved in in the specs. So yeah, kind of ironic. I had just finished doing a video for you guys called This Ain't a Rope, talking about how you should respect your cables and be all careful and everything like that. And as we're breaking down that show that I showed you, I uh, step on a cable and snap it. So it becomes a nice teaching moment for us. So when I got back down here, the first thing I did was uh, go to Radio Shack. They have a pretty amazing system, actually, for power supplies, wall warts, whatever you want to call those things, little adapters that plug into your computer accessories, your radios, your anything that needs to be charged, your keyboards, your digital um, boxes that you use for recording. And I just wanted to show you what, uh, how to work this, what to look for, and what these things are. You see, the wall wart or power supply does not have to be the same brand as what came with your unit. So if it, if it gets tweaked out, you can always go down to the electronics place and figure it out. So there's a few things you need to look for to be able to substitute something else for it. And that's what we're just going to go through today. There's four things you need to match. The voltage, the amperage or the power the size of the connector plug, and then the polarity, which is the plus minus, how that works. So volts, you want the same voltage as your original power supply. The second thing is the amps or the power. It's just kind of how beefy this thing is. If I took a nine volt battery or a couple of, you know, little batteries, that's not gonna be as big as my car battery. That has a lot more cranking power, the amps on there rather than just being able to, you know, move a little tiny speaker. Okay, so that's amps, that's power. You just want to make sure it's enough to power your device. And if you get the bigger one, it's not going to hurt anything. It's like having a Ferrari and taking it 30 miles an hour to the grocery store to get groceries. You know, it's overkill. You probably paid too much if that's all you want to do with it, but not going to hurt anything. You just want to have enough amps to get the job done. So most keyboards, radios, computer boxes, things like that use less than one amp. So rather than saying we're going to use 0 0.300 amps or a third of an amp, we say we're going to use 300 milliamps. A milliamp is a thousandth of an amp. So rather than using decimals, you know, 300 milli is the same as 0.3 amps. Milliamps you will see written as small letter M and then a capital A, so milliamp. The milliamp rating will be on the back of your device, your box, right there. You can see that, right? And it will also be on your power supply. So you just want enough or a little bit more, okay? The third thing you have to match from your original power supply is the plug size. Now, there are about a million of these. Radio Shack has a very good uh, system. They got this thing nailed. They got it wired. It's really great, and I'm going to show you. So the cool thing about Radio Shack is that they have this key ring thing with every size of little plug. So if you bring your device into the store and you want to bring the device because they've got a bunch of plugs, you bring your device and you can try all of their little plugs and go, oh, that's the perfect one. Then on the samples, there are letters. So you'll know, oh, I need a K plug or an L plug or whatever. The next thing you want to look at is polarity. The plus, minus, red, black. And some kinds of cables, it is actually a tip and a sleeve. That's how they say a 
tip is positive, the sleeve is negative, or the sleeve is ground. Anyway, on these little guys, there's not really a tip there. There's, well, there's an outside and an inside. So the outside is called the sleeve. The little, whatever the inside metal contact is, that's called the tip. So on the back of your device and on your power supply, there's a little diagram. It's got kind of a circle and a little plus sign and a minus sign. Sometimes it's a dotted for the plus, that kind of a thing. And that's just showing you that your tip is positive, sleeve is ground, or the other way around. So when you look for your replacement part, you want to make sure you have the right polarity. That's your word for the day. So let's put it all together. In my little broken thing here, I'm looking at output 12 volts, 1000 milliamps. Okay, cool. So I know I need the one amp size or greater when I get to Radio Shack. Now your device may say some odd number of milliamps. Don't worry about it if Radio Shack does not have the exact same number get the next bigger one, and then you're all good to go. So in the Radio Shack system, some of the power supplies come with an assortment of maybe a half a dozen little tips in there for you. In other ones, you buy the power adapter, and there's a little rack of all these different types of plugs, and they give you the right one for what you need. You snap it onto the end of the thing, and you get your own custom-made deal. Now on those plugs, there's two ways you can do it. You can hook them this way, or you can flip it around and hook them the other way. One will make the device a positive tip, and the other will make a positive sleeve. So you want to make sure you plug it the right way for what your device needs. So that's it. Volts, amps, plug size, and polarity. That's what you need to replace your old power supply without sending back to the factory for a new one. For more info, on home recording and using Audacity, check out our classes, The Voice Recording Boot Camp, and how I set up and use Audacity the super easy way. Thanks.